Well, today marks an important date for the East Africa region as we see the much-hyped East Africa Community Common Market Protocol become operational. Now, while the actualization of the protocol may take a while, expectation in the region is for this to present huge opportunities where the protocol signed by the five East African Community Heads of State on November the 20th last year provides for free movement of goods, persons, labor, capital and services and the rights of establishment and residents as well. Emerson Jeff Kingi, Minister of the East African Community, spoke to me a little earlier about where we're at when it comes to their plans. What we are, uh, we are at currently is uh, we are at the second stage of integration, that is the common market, uh, which has uh, taken effect uh, today. And uh, what we're looking at uh, in terms of the common market is uh, to free the factors of production, uh, to maximize uh, production within the region. We want to, uh, to, um, to free uh, things like uh, services so that uh, people can be, a professionals can be able to cross the borders and offer their services within the region. There's also going to be the, uh, the free movement of persons, uh, free movement of workers and laborers so that people can be able to seek employment uh, uh, within the region without really necessarily bothering about any discrimination based on nationality. Again, we want to free capital movement uh, so that investment becomes uh, easier and, and we can maximize on our investment potential. Again, uh, we are looking at uh, the right of establishment where uh, East Africans can uh, move freely from one uh, partner state to the other uh, to, to actually be able to set up shop and start uh, self-employment without any hindrance, without any discrimination. And again, uh, the common market comes with the right of residence, mm -hmm. where, for instance, as a Kenyan, I can be able to, uh, to reside in Tanzania and uh, be able to, to take up uh, an, an activity there. So this is what comes with uh, the common market protocol. Now we have partner states needing to ensure that all uh, domestic laws are congruent with the uh, provisions made by the protocol itself. The process will of course uh, require a review of national laws moving forward. What strides are being made uh, in this regard and do you see ratification of laws to access these regional markets seeing any hurdles as we move forward? Because certainly all of the players haven't necessarily always been singing from the same hymn sheets here. Uh, what uh, the obligation um, being put on the partner states, uh, on the shoulders of the partner states now, is to make sure that uh, one, they domesticate the provision, the protocol, and that then will demand uh, that uh, our national laws, of the, the national laws of the partner states are reviewed, uh, so that where uh, there are any laws that tend to be inconsistent with the provision of the protocol, then those laws must be amended to conform mm -hmm. with the provision of the protocol. Because according to the treaty, uh, any, any policy, any laws that are passed at the regional level tend to rank higher compared to the national laws. So there's need uh, for, 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 um, uh, for the partner states to urgently and almost immediately uh, to review the national laws uh, to cushion the provisions of the common market protocol. And uh, it's one of the provisions in the common market protocol that immediately, immediately the common market kicks in then uh, partner states uh, commit themselves to review the national laws. So the commitment uh, that is, is what there. is happening. Uh, the commitment is there. In fact, if you look at the Common Market Protocol, there is a list of commitment on how partner states are going to liberalize uh, different sectors of, um, of our economy, uh, categories of workers, categories of services, and when they intend to open up the job market on how they intend to open up the service market. And therefore, there is a binding commitment made by uh, all the individual partner states. Uh, here in Kenya, immediately, we ratify the Common Market Protocol. Uh, we did constitute uh, a team of experts uh, to take audit of all the national laws in Kenya with a view to advising us on uh, uh, the ones that need amendments and whether they, it's necessary for us to come up with new legislation altogether. I'll personally be receiving uh, that report from the team of expert next week, whereupon then I will uh, forward it to the state law office uh, for action. Well, let's run through the payoff of successfully going down this route by reflecting on just some of the benefits this harmonization has already seen. I mean, the first thing that springs to mind is trade benefits. So what shifts have we seen in the balance of trade between members? 
I think um, if you look at the, the, uh, the figures since uh, the inception of, uh, since the launch of the Customs Union way back in 2005, you will note that uh, it's, it's been a win-win uh, situation because the volume of trade uh, flow um, amongst and between the countries has increased both ways. Uh, and therefore, it's, 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 it's a big benefit. It's a huge benefit to, to, to the partner states. Uh, when we were launching our customs union in 2005, it was felt that uh, Kenya, being uh, a strong economy in the region, was, was placed to, to, uh, at an advantage state compared to the other uh, partner states. But that has been proved very wrong. Uh, actually, if you look at the figures, uh, the kind of flow of trade is actually uh, adding up to a win-win situation. Mm -hmm. And therefore, that has given us the reason to even forge ahead uh, stronger. Well, that one perception being broken, uh, the other initial fear was that revenues would drop moving forward. What's played out there since the formation of the Customs Union? Well, uh, no partner state has, uh, has actually uh, complained as a result of the customs union in terms of reduction of, uh, of revenue. And in fact, uh, the resolve now is uh, to have a central center for uh, uh, one single center for, for purposes of customs administration. Uh, there has never been any complaint from any of the partner states that uh, they have lost revenue as a result of, um, of the integration process. However, in, in, a, in a situation where a partner state uh, loses revenue and, and, and is injurious to its uh, economy, then uh, there is a provision uh, within the customs union that they can even apply to stay certain application of certain tariffs. And uh, that has been uh, the way we've been handling the issue of what happens when, when yeah. I'm losing revenue. And uh, we've been able to handle it very well. Well, that having been said and progress being made on those two fronts respectively, while cross-border investments have increased, it remains still uh, relatively low. What's the vision for investment moving forward? Uh, what are some of the investment benefits yet to be reaped as you see it? Uh, well, East Africa community has uh, vast potential in terms of investment. Uh, as a region, uh, as we go to the common market, we cannot realize a meaningful market if, if we don't fix our infrastructure. So there's massive investment opportunity in the infrastructure uh, in a sector, uh, in the energy sector. Uh, and therefore, these are the areas where we, 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 we uh, whenever we undertake mission out of the region to market the, uh, the region as a single uh, investment destination. These are the areas we keep on uh, resonating and, and, and echoing out there so that people, both domestic and, and foreign investors, can take advantage in this area. We need to fix our infrastructure yeah. for us to have a competitive edge when it comes to lowering uh, the cost of doing trade. We're going to be looking at the establishment of a political federation. What structure are we looking forward to here briefly? Well, the structure is what is now being discussed. Uh, I wouldn't want to preempt uh, the kind of uh, discussion that we are now engaging. As you're aware, you're aware the uh, political federation is actually the last pillar of uh, mm -hmm. integration. It is the ultimate goal of the uh, EAC having put the customs union, the common market, the monetary union, and thereafter, we can now begin to, uh, to, uh, to engage on how we, uh, we want to see our, uh, the shape of our political federation. However, aware that there are quite a number of challenges and concerns that are being raised, we have already begun the work uh, preparing uh, our base for, for, for the political federation.